Exploration of the Moon. Listen carefully to identify steps scientists took to find out what the trip would be like before sending the astronauts to the moon. Listen also and find out who won the space race to the moon. This was the President of the United States many years ago. Who is the current President of the United States? In 1961, the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, announced that the United States would send astronauts to the moon within 10 years. This seemed impossible to many people, but President Kennedy and the NASA scientists were determined to succeed. They were committed to making it happen. Thus, they started the Apollo program in order to send people to the moon. But there was a lot of work to be done before anyone could get anywhere near the moon. They didn't have much information about what it would be like to visit. Surveyor 1 was the first spacecraft Americans sent to the moon, but it was an unmanned spacecraft, that is, a spacecraft without any people aboard. The purpose of Surveyor 1 was to survey or study the moon's surface. It carried equipment to study the land, temperature, and other things NASA scientists needed to know before sending people to the moon. This would help them answer questions about what they would discover when they landed. The Apollo program involved many missions or jobs that needed to be done to accomplish what they wanted to do. The first mission, Apollo 1, was a disaster. A disaster is a sudden event that is unpleasant. The spacecraft caught on fire before they had a chance to launch it. After that, however, the Apollo scientists had better success. First, there were unmanned missions to test various rockets and systems. These missions would help answer questions about whether their spacecraft could handle the trip. This beautiful picture shows Apollo 4, an unmanned mission to test a rocket engine. This is a type of engine that would eventually carry men to the moon. Next came manned missions, or missions with people. But these astronauts did not get to go to the moon. Instead, they were practicing and testing equipment to make sure everything would work properly. This photo shows the crew of the Apollo 7 mission. Finally, on July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 was launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. There were three astronauts aboard. Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. This picture was taken shortly before they went on their historic mission. It was historic because it was important and many people would remember it for many years. It took four days for Apollo 11 to travel the 239,000 miles from Earth to the Moon. Does that sound like a long time? You heard in an earlier read aloud that it would take thousands of years to travel to some stars. During the launch, the astronauts were sitting in the very top of the rocket. Once it reached outer space, the part they were in broke off from the rocket and continued on toward the moon. The rocket was not needed once the ship reached outer space. The rocket's job was done after it launched the spacecraft beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Michael Collins was the pilot for the command module, which drove the lunar module close to the moon but did not actually land there. The lunar module, called the Eagle, 
was attached to the command module during the journey from Earth to the Moon. In fact, the word lunar is used to describe anything that is related to the Moon. Once they got close enough to the Moon, however, the eagle broke off from the command module and landed on the surface. So the spacecraft had three parts at launch, but only the lunar module actually landed on the moon. The Eagle orbited the moon as Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong prepared to descend or go down and land on the surface. This is Mission Control where NASA scientists on the ground talk to and help astronauts in space. Meanwhile, as the Eagle approached the surface, Hundreds of scientists back at Mission Control were watching their computers nervously were worried about what might happen to make sure everything went as planned. There is little room for error or mistakes in space travel. The NASA scientists monitored every single part of the ship, making sure every fuse and wire were working properly. At the same time, people all over America were glued to their television sets, watching the news, also nervously waiting to see what would happen. The Eagle was equipped with television cameras so everyone back home could see and hear everything that was happening 239,000 miles away on the moon. The moon landing excited people all over the world. Remember the space race with the Soviet Union? The United States was the first country in the world to send people to the moon. It took longer than expected, but finally, Neil Armstrong announced the famous words, The Eagle has landed. Great sighs of relief and cheers went up from Mission Control and in living rooms across America. Next, Neil Armstrong prepared to leave the Eagle and step out onto the moon. This picture shows what Americans back home saw on their television sets. As you can see, the picture was not very clear. But if you look closely, you can see Armstrong about to set foot on the moon's surface. Armstrong stepped down and landed on the fine, soft dust of the moon's surface. With his first step, he said, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. What did Neil Armstrong mean? He meant that he himself had taken a small step from the eagle's ladder onto the moon, but that step represented a huge leap in terms of the advances humans had made by landing on the moon. Buzz Aldrin followed Armstrong down the ladder. Both astronauts wore special spacesuits designed to endure the harsh temperatures on the moon's surface. The astronauts conducted experiments to help future astronauts and scientists. The first thing they noticed was their mobility or how easy it was to walk and move around. The moon has very little gravity compared to Earth. Here on Earth, when you jump up, you come straight back down. Not so on the moon. When you hop on the moon, you stay up for a few seconds and come down rather slowly. Can you imagine hopping up in the air and staying up there for a bit? Imagine how far you could jump. The astronauts collected samples of the moon's dust and rocks. Then they planted an American flag in the moon's soil. Explorers often planted flags to claim the new land for their home countries. Columbus planted the Spanish flag when he landed in the New World. 
They had prepared the flag beforehand by inserting wires in it so that it would be firm and appear to be waving, even though there is no wind on the moon. Five more Apollo missions landed successfully on the moon after that first mission. In the end, the Apollo astronauts brought back a total of 842 pounds of moon rocks. Many of these rocks are on display in museums around the world. Apollo 17, launched in 1972, was the last mission to reach the moon. Nobody has returned to the moon since. That is bound to change as humans continue to explore outer space. <laughs>